Hey, I'm Amber with Subways IO. Welcome back to our Signaling Basics series. In Signals 101, we covered the fundamentals of signal circuits and signal types. Now, in Signals 102, we're diving deeper into signal enforcement with timers, building on the foundation we laid in our 101 content. Feel free to skip ahead to any section that interests you more. Let's jump right in. Certain areas of the transit system require enforced reduced operating speeds for safety. These areas may include long descending grades, curves, switches, controlled approaches to a preceding train, and more. The signal system can enforce these speed limits in various ways. This is where timers come in. Let's start with grade timers. At the beginning of a grade time area, there's an insulated joint or IJ. When a train crosses this IJ, it enters the grade time area and is timed by a signal relay. Ahead, there will be at least one signal set to danger. This signal will stay at danger until the train operator adheres to the posted speed, allowing the timer to run out before passing the next signal. If the train operator maintains the correct speed, the timer will expire, and the signal system will change the signal at danger to a clear aspect. However, if the train is moving too fast, the timer will not expire, and the signal will remain at danger, increasing the risk of the train operator overrunning it. The NYC subway utilizes two primary grade time arrangements to enforce speed restrictions on specific sections of track, with the first being a one-shot timer. A one-shot grade timer is used where lower speeds are required. After passing a proceed with caution, be prepared to stop signal, and a miscellaneous sign indicating the start of the grade time area, the train operator encounters a red over lunar white signal. This indicates the need to approach at the allowable speed. If the operator complies, the signal will clear when the timer expires. However, if the operator exceeds the posted speed, the signal will remain red, and an automatic stop arm will activate the train's emergency brakes. Two-shot grade time is employed where higher speeds are possible. Following a miscellaneous sign signaling the start of the grade time area, the operator sees a signal indicating, approach at the allowable speed and the next signal will clear. If the operator complies, the subsequent signal, initially red, will clear when the timer runs out. Failure to comply will keep the signal red, forcing the operator to slow down to avoid overrunning it. The term two-shot derives from the operator's two opportunities to comply with the speed restriction. The first shot. The signal displaying yellow over illuminated S should change to green before passing it. A green aspect indicates that the subsequent signal, previously red, has transitioned to a less restrictive state. Second shot. If the operator passes the yellow over S signal without it turning green, they must slow down or stop to avoid overrunning the red signal. Now onto diverging timers. Diverging grade time applies specifically to situations where speed restrictions are only necessary when a train is changing tracks using a switch. It's only active when the switch is set for a diverging route. Otherwise, regular signals govern the train's movement. Notably, diverging grade time can follow either a one-shot or two-shot format. Important points regarding grade timers. Triggering the timer. A grade time signal won't clear unless the train initiates the timing process by crossing the insulated joint located at the grade time area's entrance. The train must pass over this joint for the timer to activate. Timing versus speed. Grade time signals measure the elapsed time, not the train's speed. Entering the area too fast and then slowing down won't trigger the timer in time if the initial speed exceeded the limit. Multiple grade time signals can be linked across several signal blocks to enforce speed restrictions over a longer stretch. The posted speed will remain in effect throughout this area unless a new speed limit is displayed within it. Countdown timers, certain one-shot grade time. Signals have a countdown timer displayed beneath the red over lunar white aspect. This timer is linked to an automatic stop arm that triggers when the countdown reaches zero. Resuming speed. After clearing the last timer in a grade time area, the train operator can resume the maximum allowed speed unless otherwise restricted by curves or other factors. Next is station timers. Station time is a speed control mechanism implemented when a train approaches a preceding train that is either stationary or moving within a station. Its primary function is to maintain a safe distance between trains, allowing them to safely converge. Here are the conditions for station time. A preceding train presence. Station time is only active if the signal system detects a train or conflicting movement ahead. 
Two-block separation prevents trains from getting closer than two signal blocks to the preceding train, ensuring a safe following distance. Here are some station time operation functions. Timing, when active, station time functions like one-shot grade time. It times the train from the point of entry into the station time section until it reaches the next red signal. Signal clearance. The red signal will clear only after the timer expires. Exceeding the posted speed can lead to the activation of emergency brakes by the automatic stop arm. Clear signals. If all signals are clear, station time is not in effect, and the train doesn't need to adhere to the posted station time speed. Signal display. Station time aspects can be displayed on automatic, approach, or standard home signals. After the Union Square accident in 1991, NYCT evaluated the risks associated with overspeeding through diverging routes and launched a program to address high-risk locations. This led to the introduction of an enhanced fixed block system known as WDSES, or Wheel Detector Speed Enforcement System. The WETSES used pairs of axle counters as detection points to dynamically measure train speeds and release the mechanical trippers if an overspeed was detected. Though it was installed in various areas of the system, it proved cumbersome in operation and unreliable and is no longer part of NYCT signal designs beyond what's currently in place. We'll discuss this further in our CBTC 101, but here's how SES works. Certain switches require more restrictive speed control than grade time can provide. Since grade time only measures the time between two points, it can't guarantee that a train is consistently adhering to the posted speed within the grade time area. It only ensures that the average speed complies. For switches where precise speed control is critical, the Wheel Detector Speed Enforcement System, SES, is used. The Wheel Detector SES involved multiple detection points on the track that measured the speed of each axle as the train passed over them. The system enforced a gradual reduction in speed as the train approached the switch ensuring that by the time the train operated over the switch, it was within the allowable speed limit. The SES also made sure that the entire train complied with the speed limit as it passed over the switch, maintaining the restriction until the train cleared the switch and exited the SES area. If a train exceeds the speed limit, the wheel detector SES automatically raises the stop arms in the area, activating the train's emergency brakes. In such cases, the stop arms remain in the tripping position until the system was reset by the controlling tower or the RCC. Now that we have a solid understanding of timers and signal enforcement, let's discuss some procedures to handle malfunctions and issues that may arise. Like any system, the signal system isn't foolproof, so it was designed with certain workarounds in the event of a track circuit failure. One such procedure is called a key buy, which works with automatic and approach signals. For more on these signal types, check out our Signals 101 video. Key buy is a procedure used to override a signal and its associated tripper arm by bridging a track block. This process is applicable only to automatic and approach signals. It's crucial for train operators to know when they are authorized to key by a red automatic or approach signal without explicit permission. If the signal has a miscellaneous authorized key by AK plate, or if it's located on a yard lead, within yard limits, or on a known storage track with at least one train already stored, the operator can perform the procedure without seeking permission. In any other scenario, explicit permission is required from the Rail Control Center. RCC, an RTO service supervisor or manager, the signals department, or through a general order. While we can't provide the detailed steps of the process for obvious reasons, we'll reserve that for school car training for future operators. We are, however, allowed to discuss the different key by signal plates, how to recognize them, and what they mean. 1. Red automatic or approach signal with a no key by plate. This indicates that the key by function at this signal has been deactivated. The operator must take manual action in this case. This setup is marked by a yellow no key by plate under the signal. 2. Red circle K plate. This plate indicates that the position of the insulated joint relative to the automatic stop arm makes the normal key by procedure impossible. Like the no key by setup, this also requires manual input from the operator and is denoted by a specific plate under the signal. For any automatic or approach signals without a plate, these are standard setups, and if they lack an AK plate, you will need permission to perform a key by. Now, if the key by function only works with automatic and approach signals, what happens if there's an issue with a home or interlocking signal? If a train needs to pass a standard home signal displaying red over red, a special signal aspect known as a call-on can be issued by the tower or the rail control center, provided the switch is properly set. 
We highlighted the call on light in our Signals 101 video. The call on function can be activated using a manual arm release, though the setup may vary depending on the signal. When a call on is authorized, the signal will display red over red with yellow. On a home signal, the operator should also observe the stop arm go down. Here are some basic rules to follow for both key buy and call on procedures. Make sure you do not exceed 10 miles per hour. Be prepared to stop within one half of your range of vision. Make sure to watch the rails and switches for the route and look for anything unsafe on the trackway. All very important rules to proceed and operate with extreme caution. We hope Signals 102 has provided you with a deeper understanding of timers, signal override procedures, and some behind the scenes systems that help keep everything running smoothly. We'll be following up with a few Signals Extra Credit video shorts to cover signage and switches to break down what it all means. Next, we'll get back to basics with Traction Power 101, where we'll cover how our trains get their power and what happens when it hits the third rail. We also want to acknowledge Welcome to an Experience for their fantastic video content, which we've been using to explain some of these principles. If you haven't already, be sure to check out their channel and content. If you enjoyed our content and want to see more, please follow and subscribe as it helps us a lot. If you'd like to support us further, consider buying us a coffee. I'm Amber, along with Ashley and Rob from Subways.io, signing off until next time.